This is the SG2100 automatic label applicator. It's made by Southern California Packaging Equipment, and it's designed to do front, back, and top labeling. This is the ST2100 automatic label applicator head. It features a 16 inch on line. It can actually run at 2100 linear inches per minute. This will actually label your products at about 125 in it, so it'll keep up with the production rate. As you can see, we put the roller labels on here. We thread it through the machine. This is the drive roll assembly, the take up rewind for the waste, and the peeler bar, which will do the actual application and apply the label. These are the dual metering wheels. The goal here is to interfere with the product just a little bit so it slows down and creates a gap of two or three inches between each individual container. Uh, that way we can detect the, each container and get a label on the side and top. As we continue down the machine, we come to the area of the applicator where we're doing the side labeling. What we're doing here is we have a timed, a servo-powered top hold-down belt that's, that speeds at the same speed as the conveyor. This allows the product to come down, be held, and then we wipe the label around the sides as it progresses down the conveyor belt. These little side hugger belts are here so that we can actually give a secondary impression to the label. So the label is going to be applied. It may be flagging up here a little bit at the end. And what we're going to do is just hit this section here and rotate the product a little bit like this so that it just wipes it down. There's another side uh, hugger belt on the opposite side of the conveyor. And what we have here, again, is an effort to uh, lay down the label. So when the label leaves the outdater, it could be flagging up a little bit. This side could be flagging up, so we're going to come, we're going to go like this, and then we're going to go like this, and wipe down the label completely. So here's the controller for the 2100 label applicator. What we have is you've got the on-off switch for the conveyor, You've got the on-off switch for the spacer wheel, as well as the speed of the spacer. To adjust the spacer wheel speed, that'll help you get that gap that you want. We just need a gap of two to three inches, and that's adequate. So that should keep your product throughput running between 125 and 150 all day long. This, this switch is for these two wrap belts. Um, that just turns them on and off. They're already at a set speed, and the way they're set is enough to get a little partial wrap and uh, wrap down label. Here's your main power on and off, your emergency stop, your top hold down on off, run, jog, stop, and this is a enable and disable. This takes the torque on and off the label applicator heads. So when it's time to thread new labels, you typically take the feed off. That lets you just thread the labels through and turn the nip roller assembly by hand so, so you can thread the label easily. When you first power on the machine you're going to see system OK and you're going to have the count. The count is uh, counting products, they come by the label applicator heads. To zero the count at the start of a shift you can press stop for two seconds. It'll zero the count and then from there on you can count uh, a work order or a batch or whatever uh, you want. You can complete that and then press stop again for two seconds. In normal run mode, you'll see system OK. When you do things like turn the feed off, it'll indicate that what you've done. Uh, if you have the e-stop uh, depressed, it'll also tell you that the e-stop's on. So it'll come back off as soon as you release whatever was causing the error. To get inside the menu, and we'll just go around once, you press mode. So mode takes you to your presets. This has up to 50 presets. And to select a preset, you go up and down. This, ha this product we were running earlier happens to be in uh, preset 2. So every time you want to run this product, just select preset 2 and you'll be ready to go. If I press again, uh, you have a menu for setup applicator 1, setup applicator 2, and setup applicator 3. And we'll go inside those in a minute. That's pretty, it, pretty much it. It's a very simple system, just has the three applicators. So now let's go inside one of them. They're all the same, so they'll all do the same thing, have the same settings. So again, very simple, easy machine to uh, get familiar with. So we're pressing mode. We're going inside the setup applicator one. So now everything you're gonna adjust here is in preset two. 
because we've already selected preset two. It would be the exact same thing had you run the, another product and maybe you were in preset one, these would just be at some different settings. But it's all memorized, you don't have to save it, you just stay in that preset and everything will change and be saved when you move to the next one. So the first setting that we see here is the product delay. Now, product delay is the time between you detect the product and the label will dispense. So it's in timing, so this is 85 milliseconds. So we detect the product, 85 milliseconds later, we dispense the label. Label delay is the timing between the, when we detect the label gap and the label stops. So you had the product delay, which is the label start. Now you have the label delay, which is the label stop. What we have here, we're going to detect the gap between the labels, and 160 milliseconds later, we're going to stop. That'll help you get that flag out that you want on the edge of the peeler bar. The applicator speed is uh, pretty much fixed. We've got a fixed conveyor speed. Uh, we like to run that way. We like to just fix things and then don't, you know, that way you don't have to change all these settings. We're running at a rate that will get you your numbers that you want and that way we can just leave everything alone. Leave the feed fix, fixed, the settings will be fixed, the applicator speed can remain fixed, and all you need to do is trim it a little bit. So to trim any of these, just go a little bit up and down. And uh, my recommendation would be to just make small changes at any given time and try it and then try a little more, a little less and just do, don't get yourself in trouble by adjusting this thing, you know, 20, 30% out of range and then expecting it to, to work right. It just won't. So small changes at a time really, really help out. Each applicator also has an enable, so we have an on and an off. So when it's off, you're not gonna dispense any labels. Off is also a good time to change out labels if you need to. We'll leave that one on because we're gonna run some product later. Okay, so then exit setup one, and then you're ready to set up applicator two. I don't need to explain any of this, it's all the same stuff. It's product delay, label delay, applicator speed, and enable on and off. And when you're done with that, you just exit. Same thing with applicator three. Go in there, you got product delay, you got label delay, you've got applicator speed, and you also have enable on off. See, so there we go. I'll exit out of there, and we'll be back to the main menu. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the roll of labels on the applicator head. We're removing waste, we pull out, and the waste mandrel collapses allowing you to easily remove all the waste material. He's putting it back, and the next thing he's gonna do is open up the nip roll assembly. So rotate that, that little handle there, open up the nip roll assembly, and you can actually just let the labels out. He's taking the brush off so he can get, get in there a little bit easier. And then we're able to just basically rewind the unused labels onto the roll. Take off the outer disc just by rotating it. There's actually a flat and an eye lock there that, uh, that, that just kind of makes an automatic lock. And then there come your roll of labels. So that's it. I'm going to put the same roll of labels on there. You can see the direction that it's going in going to fit that roll of labels on there, going to line up the flat with that nylon thread and push it on and then just rotate it slightly and it locks in place. Going to take the labels, he's following the threading diagram which we'll see in a minute. He's going up around the first roller and up over the dancer arm. Okay, so I changed positions on you so you can see a little bit better what's going on. So he's just, you can see the little, the threading diagram, it's actually a sticker there on the applicator. So when you first start doing this, you'll need to reference that threading diagram. But after you've done it several times, let's say three or four times, you're just gonna have this down. It's super easy, super quick. 
and you can get back running as fast as possible. So we're threading the uh, liner through the peeler bar assembly. We're putting the liner through the fork in the label sensor. We're going around the peel tip. And then just by hand, he's pulling the, the labels and the liner back far enough so that we can eventually wrap it around the rewind. Now here we go, we're going to the drive and nip roll assembly. It, it, again, it's been opened so that we can use it. He's pulling it tight. He's going to close it. Run the liner around the dancer assembly and then just stick it through the rewind. It'll, uh, if you left enough length on there, you just stick it through the rewind and the first couple labels that you run it will actually uh, take up and you won't have to worry about it. So here's how we have the feed is off and we're actually demonstrating how you can turn that drive roller without uh, any torque on it. So that feed switch on the control allows you to do this. Okay, so here we are now. We've got a couple of labels lined up and we're going to go ahead the brush back on and we're going to go ahead and jog a few of these to make sure everything's working right. Here we are back at the controller. So right now the feed is off. That allowed us to turn by hand the nip roll drive roll assembly to, to thread the labels. I'm going to put that back on. Now you can't move that with your hand. The torque is on there, the motor's engaged. And what I'm going to do is just jog I'm going to make sure we have that head one on because I was playing with it. Okay, it's on. If it were off, this wouldn't work so well. Um, I'm also going to turn off, just so you know, I'm going to turn off applicators uh, two and three so that they don't spit labels out while we're just trying to set up this one. So I'm just going through the menus, turning off the other two applicators so we can concentrate on the one. Okay, so here it goes. So all I'm going to do is just press jog. You can see it jogged one label. You see there's a little twirly there that shows us that there was some action. It's also popped us into run mode. So this is how you can, uh, after you've threaded the labels, run a few just to see that, you know, three, four, five, make sure it's running properly. So let's go back to the applicator and we'll here take we a look. back at the applicator. I'm just going to press jog a couple times. And you can see one label's coming out perfectly. And the next thing we'll do, I think that's enough. That was about five. The next thing we'll do is we'll run a, just one product through and we'll make sure that uh, everything's working fine. Here we are. We've just fr freshly threaded the machine. We've jogged it several times. And now as a final uh, test, we're going to run about two or three products through it to make sure that it's labeling fine. And then it's ready to go back into production. So here I am. I'm going to turn on metering wheels. And here comes our product. One, two, three. And we can take a look at those and see what we think. So here we are. Here's the three uh, products that we ran through. Everything's looking real good. So now it would be time to go on to applicator two, applicator three. Do the same setup. It's exactly the same. All three heads, the wipe on heads, they're all exactly the same. Follow that same procedure. Look at the threading diagram. Follow the threading diagram and you'll be up and running in no time. Okay, so here we are. We're going to do a little um, training on how to set the, the sensor. What we've done is we turned the feet off again and backed up the label to where it's just on the liner. Now we're pressing teach. We're going to teach the sensor, uh, the sensitivity just on the liner itself. So it holds it for two or three seconds, and then you can tell from the light that the sensor has now taught itself the liner. Okay, so now we're going to move the label between the forks on the sensor, and we've seen that it's gone off. And here we go back to the gap between the labels and we see that it's gone on. So actually, that's all you need to do. These are self-taught sensors. 
They're actually very sophisticated. They're a clear on clear center. And that's all that you need to do. So again, position it on the liner, press the button for two seconds, and it'll teach itself. And then you're ready to run. So again, all three heads are the same. You would do that on all the applicator heads. Okay, so here's the product sensor. These are actually special uh, banner product sensors that are good for the clear materials that you're running with. So uh, we sum up with a retro reflective. So they're looking at what's commonly called a bicycle reflector. And they're, um, the signal's bouncing back. It also has right here um, a sensitivity adjustment so that you can adjust this if, for instance, you're not getting a good read on your clear product. Adjust that down a little bit so that it sees the leading edge of the product. Super easy, super quick, and you're just ready to run in, in just a couple of minutes. Okay, so here's how to adjust the I.O. on the applicator mounts. You, you, we have a lock there, so he's unlocking the handle, and then he's going to indicate, you can actually write down or indicate where you want the applicator to be. It's got a tape there and it's got a pointer. And then here's a handle that you can adjust the applicator head in and out for the different product sizes. So here we go, we're rotating it. It's moving the head in. So counterclockwise moves the head in and then clockwise moves it back out. And we'll move it back out to the same position we were at. And then once you've adjusted it, go ahead and lock it up. Give that a couple turns, put it down tight so it's not gonna move. You can also see here in the picture, we're showing the casters and the leveling pads down at the bottom. You can actually lock the caster with that little, with your foot, and the leveling pad can be brought down so as to make the machine really firm and rigid wherever you're gonna place it. The up-down adjustment, the same thing. You've got the locking handle, you've got the pointer, and then you've got up top, you've got the up-down uh, to, to bring the applicator up and down. Again, that'll position the label on the product where you want it. The, um, you can see on the tape that we have and the indicator mark, we've got some presets already marked uh, there uh, with another piece of uh, indicator tape. So uh, we do this over time. That way we can easily set up the machine. We can uh, set up the machine between several different products and it's super quick and super easy. This is the tilt adjustment that will adjust it and give you a little bit of skew on the applicator. Again, just a, just a small adjustment makes a big difference. Um, what we want to do is, is if you are running product and you're getting the labels crooked on it, you can adjust this. Just a little eighth inch turn up or down and it'll make a big difference on the applicator. So here we have some product that is, uh, the first one's actually skewed. And what we would do is adjust that skew adjust, adjust that handle so that we would lower the leading edge of the peel tip to, to end up with a, with a straight label. And uh, there's, no, there's no rocket science here. It's just really obvious that you just, the applicator head is just aiming a little bit too far up. It's a little bit crooked and you need to adjust that skew adjust to bring it down and make it level and get a nice straight I want to edge. mention the, uh, the uh, up, down, and in and out adjustments on the powered hutter belt assemblies here. So we've got, um, you can rotate that dial and that'll bring that hugger belt up or bring it down. And again, we want to be kind of in the center of the product as we're rotating it. This other one is in and out. And the idea is, is that we want to bring that product firmly up against the opposite side, up against the guide rail, so that the rubber belt, as it's spinning faster than the conveyor, will spin that product and lay that label down. And so we're doing that on both sides. Both sides have the exact same adjustments. And um, all you need to do, is the machine will come pretty much set up. So all you need to do is just adjust these things quarter turn for a little tweaking and uh, should work great.